My car is having a very rough idle. As far as we all can think, it's probably a vacuum leak. It's been about 20,000 miles ago that I got my walnut blasting, and I got the walnut blasting because it needed to be done. Uh, I also noticed that the car was being a little bit sluggish, so I was like, oh, let's do the walnut blasting. Then I did the spark plugs, and it got even more sluggish, and the idle's been getting worse and worse over the last 20,000 miles. The only thing that I can come up with or that anybody can come up with is either a vacuum leak or a boost leak, which makes the most sense. However, if you watched my last video, you know that that was not actually the case. So what's up everybody, thanks for coming by for another video. So if you watched my last video, you know that I just replaced my turbo inlet and bypass valve trying to track down what I thought was a vacuum leak. I'd been thinking for a long time since I got my walnut blasting that the problem I was having was a vacuum leak. It, you know, it sounds like a vacuum leak, acts like a vacuum leak, er, er, all the symptoms point to it being a vacuum leak. However, I went through all of my vacuum lines and everything that was related to the TGVs and anything that they would have had to take off when doing the walnut blasting, I couldn't find anything. A friend of mine had even suggested that maybe it was uh, a dirty MAF sensor. So I got some MAF cleaner, I took that and I tried to clean it off and that didn't fix anything apparently. Uh, side note to that. Don't spray MAF cleaner or brake cleaner in your bathtub or your sink because it'll eat away the porcelain finish and I don't know how to fix that so my apartments are going to have to deal with that. I also happened to see the same tech that did the walnut blasting at a Subaru meet and I asked him, I was like, hey, I'm having this problem. I noticed it when I first got my walnut blasting and he looked over the car real quick, didn't see anything and, you know, went back and forth with him a little bit and none of us knew anything. We couldn't figure anything out. I don't exactly remember how I came upon this, but a post popped up on the Facebook page. Somebody was having the same kind of issue and there was a random post from somebody that I don't remember responding to it telling them to check their OCV duty cycle, I believe. For the FA20, there are oil control valves for the intake cam, exhaust cam, driver side, passenger side, four cams that control the flow of oil to the cams to create changes in the variable valve timing. The symptoms of a bad oil control valve are rough idle, poor acceleration, poor gas mileage, and check engine light. I never got a check engine light with mine, but these are also very common symptoms of a vacuum leak. So as you can see, it's a very similar problem. It's kind of hard to differentiate between the two. I like to pull up the metrics in the order that they sit on the engine. So intake on the top, exhaust on the bottom, it just it makes me feel better about everything. Now the way to check this is once you have them all four pulled up, you'll notice is during your idle dip, one of your OCV duty cycles will dip lower than the other. Your numbers should be the same from side to side. So intake should read the same left and right. Exhaust should read the same left and right. Now if you're still a little bit hesitant about, you can also look inside the connector and if there's oil on the pin connectors where it plugs into the sensor, then that is also a good idea of whether or not it's operational. So as you saw, mine had oil in the connectors and I'm also having the idle drop. So we're going to replace it. So as you can see here, I'm putting a towel underneath it because when you pull it off, it will leak a little bit of oil. Then once you have both your bolts disconnected, you're just going to go ahead and gently pry it out of there. Ow, seriously? Oh, boom, there we go. Okay, well, maybe that wasn't as gently as I wanted it to be. But I went and looked at it, and there was a lot of sediment all over the thing. There's a little pin in the middle of the valve that will end up getting stuck if it's clogged up. Putting the new one in is just the opposite. Put the gasket on, slide it in, put the bolts in, and that's that. It took me like maybe five minutes to do it, and in this video, it took even less time, honestly. The hardest part was getting to the bolts and getting the hoses out of the way. Again, the part's about $120 or so. 
So it's, it's really not an expensive fix. But I think that's gonna be it for this one. But yeah, if you found this video helpful, leave a comment what you think. If, you, if there's anything that you wanna see from me, hit the like button, subscribe. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.